Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday morning once again. I hope you are having a lovely morning so far. Just give me a minute here while I bring up the video on Facebook, make sure that it's playing okay and that I can see any of your comments. One second. And where are we? There we are. Okay. Scroll that down a little bit so I can see comments and we are good to go. Excuse me, I'll adjust my chair. There we go. Well, welcome again, everyone. I hope you have some fun plans for this weekend. Uh, I guess it's kind of getting to the end of spring break for everybody. So maybe you have a last little weekend plan before kids go back to school if you have kids. Otherwise, I hope you have weekend plans anyway. Uh, so today we are going to be putting together one each of the two cards in the March 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit. So let me grab the little brochure. So this is the little um, brochure that comes in the kit. Shows you on the front the cards. Um, one thing with the Paper Pumpkin Kits, if you don't already know, they send you the supplies to make the project as you see on the front here, but of course you can use the supplies any way you like. I'm gonna be making them as shown here, um, but there is definitely room to mess around with it and do what you like with it. On the back here, it does actually show a few alternate projects that you could do with it. One other thing on the back is down the bottom here, you won't be able to, to read it, on the camera, the print's too small, but it tells you the coordinating Stampin' Up! colors. So if you are wanting to do your own thing, bring in some of your other, um, your own supplies, then it tells you right here which colors coordinate. In this case, we've got Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Old Olive, Petal Pink, Pretty Peacock, and Seaside Spray. So there's that. And then inside this, we have the steps for putting it together. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And then I have done one of each card so far. So, whoops. So here's the one with the clouds and the field of flowers. And here's the other with the, I don't know if it's sunrise from behind the mountains or sunset. You take your pick, could be either. So those are the two cards we're gonna make today. Um, with the March kit, we did get a free gift. We got some stencils and a sponge. So I am actually gonna set these aside. There's a little package with four stencils and the sponge. I'm gonna set these aside because we don't use them to make the cards, but I will come back to these once our two cards are made and we will have fun playing with those. Good morning, Madeline. I'm glad you could join. Okay, so I'm setting the stencils aside just for the moment, but as I say, we will come back and we will play with those after we make the cards that are in the kit. So I'm going to start with this one here. So in your kit, let me just grab a handful of stuff here. First of all, there is a Calypso Coral ink spot, which we're going to use, and there's the stamp set. Now, we don't use all the stamps to make these cards, but stamp set's obviously yours to keep and you can use on any other project you like. So we're gonna need that. And then we will need our glue dots and our mini stamp and dimensionals. There is some twine that we're gonna use as an embellishment. And then there's a whole stack of stuff. So the little tree cutouts, we will need one of those. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna punch it out just yet because we're gonna use it on the other card. And same with these sort of clouds and, and grass cutouts, those are on the other card. So I'll set those aside. For this card, we do need three of the little labels. So I'm going to grab those, set those out. There, this is the Pretty Peacock card bases, which we're gonna need one of for this project. 
By the way, Pretty Peacock is one of the um, 2019 to 2021 in colors um, that is retiring this year. So each year Stampin' Up! comes out with five colors that they call the in color collection and they're available for a limited time only. This is one of the ones that's retiring um, this year. When does it retire? At the end of April. So if you are interested in this or any of the other 2019 to 2021 in colors, please go have a look and order it right away because it's only available while supplies last. Okay, so I'm gonna just fold that. This is the other card base that we don't need just yet. So I'm gonna set those aside. Nope, more trees. Those there. We are gonna need one of these decorated panels for this card. These are the envelopes. We'll need one for this card. And this month they did something a little different. Often in the paper pumpkin kits, the envelope comes pre-printed with a design on it. These ones didn't. Instead, we've got these envelope liners. And so for this one, the flower is what coordinates with this card. So I'm gonna take one of those. Okay, so we have got our envelope and envelope liner can set aside for a second. Take our card base. If you have a bone folder, it's really handy because you can just run that up and down the fold of the card and now it lies a little more flat, which is nice. Okay, we are gonna do the stamping first. So we're gonna stamp the birds up here and we're gonna stamp the happy birthday sentiment. So we need our three little labels there. Find the happy birthday stamp. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to just set that down here so I can make sure it's straight and then put it on my block. And now it's, it's a lot easier to get it straight on your label if it's straight on your block, or at least for me it is. So that's why I do that. I'm gonna take our Calypso Coral ink pad and Get some ink on there. Stamp that first one there. Get a bit more ink and do the second one. There, uh, a little bit crooked, but I'm gonna go with it. Bit more ink and do the third one there. I'm just gonna clean that stamp on my stamp and chamois off to the side here. And then we're gonna trade and we're gonna stamp the little birds. So find that. Oh, my block is wet on a second when I dry that off. This is why I wear jeans because you can do things like dry your block on your jeans. Okay, so. As directed on the instructions, I'm just gonna put the one set of birds up here, but you can put as many birds on your card as you like. Okay, we'll put those little guys in that gap between the clouds, clean off that stamp, and we can set our Calypso Coral ink pad aside for now. Put the stamp back on the base here. Okay, so the next thing is we need to wrap the twine around this panel. And if you look at the instructions, it tells you right here, wrap 26 inches of linen thread around printed card front and adhere to base with mini dimensionals. So that's what we're going to do. I have measurements on the bottom of my grid paper here. If you don't have that, they have measurements along the, the bottom of the instructions here. So you, either way, you can measure your twine. So grab that, and that is 16 and 10 makes 26. Some days, depends on the day. Some days, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Put the scissors away. And so what they suggested we do is start at the back and wrap the twine around and so it gets tied at the back. 
Um, if you want to have a little twine bow on the front of your card, you know, maybe you might want to tie it here so you have a little bow, you can certainly do that. Actually, I think I am going to do that. So let's start with that and we will just leave a tail there so I'll be able to tie my bow. Wrap that around. Okay, I have to adjust that slightly so I can get my bow off to the side where I want it. Okay, let's just start that again. There we go. And bring that there. All right. Now I said a bow, I'm actually not going to do a bow, I'm just going to tie it in a little knot. There, tie it one more time so that it stays tied. Well, maybe if I can get my fingers to work. Come on, fingers. There. And I'm just going to leave those little tail ends until I get this put together, and then I might decide to, to trim them a little shorter. So in this one, let me hold it up. You can see that it's just the lines of twine across, whereas this one I've tied it on the front. So I'm going to just to do something a little bit different. And so now we're going to adhere this to the card base with the mini dimensionals. I'll stick these guys on the back of the card base here. And you can just do one in each corner if you like it, we'll hold it, but I like adding a few extras to make sure it's going to stay in place. And yes, my brain likes patterns, so I do mine in a pattern. Please note, pattern optional. You can just stick them wherever you like. Take the backing off the dimensionals. I always just make a little pile of the backing off to the side and then invariably I knock some of them to the floor. So at the end I'm you know, running around trying to pick all the little bits up off the floor. Or you can leave them as a cat toy if you have cats, they like it. Trust me, I've discovered this. Okay, one more there. Okay, card base and this just gets centered on the card base, like so. All right, and so the last step actually for this card is just to stick these happy birthdays on. Now the instructions suggested doing it with glue dots, which is what I did on this one, and it essentially just sticks it to the twine, and you can see that that kind of moves around with the twine. The other option you can do if you don't want that to be moving around at all, you can use the dimensionals and then it'll help hold the twine in place. So I'm just gonna bring the twine down a little bit because we didn't adhere the twine, we just tied it. You can still adjust it and get it exactly where you want it. You can get it lined up nicely if you like or kind of across like that. So I'm gonna do the dimensionals today on this one. And I'm doing the one in the center first because then I can get the spacing for the other two the way I want it. There, and take the backing. Sometimes the backings on these, are like that one comes off easily. Sometimes they stick a little bit. I don't have very good fingernails, but you can usually there get a nail under the edge. If you really can't get it, one thing you can do is just stick your thumb in the center like that and it kind of causes the edges to curl up a bit, makes them easier to grab. Oh, let's get it the right way up. There we go. And I think we'll put that right about there. And now because I use the dimensionals, that sticks the twine down as well. So this one is free to move. This one is stuck to the card. So whichever way you want to do it. And then I am going to use the glue dots for the other two. These guys, there. I'm able to use my fingers for these, but if that's too hard for you to do, what you can do is get your, your scissors and kind of just lift it up on the scissors and then place it down like that. For me, just using my fingers works, but that's a little trick with the scissors if you like. 
put glue dots on the other one while I'm at it. Third one there. Okay, take the backing off the glue dots and make sure it's right side up. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one about there. Straight-ish. I never get them straight. I've given up trying to get them straight. My brain likes things to be nice and straight and lined up. I've had to let that go. All right, and this one I'm gonna do approximately the same spacing up above. There. So you can see on this one that I did originally, this happy birthday, it's raised slightly from the other two because it's on the, the twine, but it's pretty much at the same. Let's see if you can see that there a little better. It's kind of pretty much at the same level, whereas this with the dimensionals, even looking at it straight on, you can see this is raised up a bit. Okay, and now this part isn't in the instructions, but I always like to put something on the inside of my cards. So I did the flowers inside this one just to kind of coordinate with these flowers on the front. So in the stamp set, you'll see this flower stamp here. And I used bumblebee ink because that coordinates, that's the yellow that they use in this card. So we'll get that stamp. I'm gonna open this up, get my bumblebee ink pad. Morning, Glenda. Okay. Oh, maybe open my bumblebee ink pad. It's fighting back. There we go. And please note this is optional. If you don't want anything inside your card, that's fine. I'm just gonna ink up my flowers. Put those on the inside there. Clean my stamp and put the ink pad away before I stick my elbow in it. Cause that's the thing. And I'm gonna put the flowers back on the acetate base there. So there's the card, but we have to do our envelope for this. Now you can leave it like this. You could just stamp on the craft envelope if you like. Um, what they included the supplies for was this liner. So we're gonna glue this liner inside the envelope. To do that, we're gonna use a bunch of glue dots. You do not want to use dimensionals for this. You want to use glue dots or the stamp and seal if you have it, um, because we want the liner to lie flat in the envelope or there won't be room for the card. So I am just going to put a bunch of glue dots on the liner here. And please make sure you're putting the glue dots on the white side, which is at the back. Oh, that one stuck to my thumb. The advantage to using the scissors is then they don't stick to your thumb. Okay. And I'm putting quite a few on here because I want to make sure this sticks. And yes, we will still be able to slide it in. I wondered about that when I first tried it, if the glue dots would prevent me from Glenda's laughing at me. Thanks, Glenda. <laughs> anyway, I wondered if uh, the glue dots would prevent me from sliding this in the envelope, but it didn't, which was nice. See, it turns out these folks at Stampin' Up know what they're doing. Who'd have thunk? Okay, take all the backings off, all the glue dots. Once again, my nice little pattern of glue dots, because if it's not in a pattern, it's just not right in my brain. Okay, and then we're just gonna slide this into the envelope all the way down until it touches the bottom and then just press down like that. And then on the back side of the envelope, you can see there's a crease here. We'll just fold along that crease. You can use your bone folder for that as well if you like and it folds the insert with it. So now we have our envelope with the insert that coordinates with our card. And that is card number one finished. So I'm just gonna, I'll just show you one more time the, the little differences. So this one that I did today, I tied this on the front this morning. 
Whereas this one I did the original way. So it's tied around the back. You don't get to see the little bow. And this one is raised on dimensionals. Whereas this one is just kind of stuck to the string and floats around on the string. So we'll set both of these guys aside there. And so now we're going to make, bring that in so you can see it, this one. So we need, we're gonna need another envelope and this is the liner that's designed to go with that one. Set that over there for the moment. Okay, we need our large label, one of those. We need our trees. These are already cut, but please be careful when you take these out because the, the trees trunks are a bit thin. So we wanna take those out carefully. We wanna make sure not to rip our trees. There, one set of trees. And then on this piece, we need one of each of these, the green grass and the two types of, two colors of cloud. Pull one of each of these out. Maybe if I can get it there. Okay. So I am going to do the stamping first. So we are going to stamp the sentiment on here. And we're also going to stamp some birds on the yellow cloud piece. So I'll get those out. We'll get the here's to you stamp. And I'm going to once again, use my grid paper to get that straight. Let me get my block. And sync that up. I don't know if you've noticed, but one thing I noticed on the stamp, see how well you can probably can't see it on there. But anyway, the ink kind of, it almost looks like it's got little gaps in it. That's okay. It's still going to stamp fine. There. Get our label. Oh, I got an extra bit stuck to the end of that. There we go. Get that centered in there. And just push down firmly. And there we go. Clean that stamp. And then we're going to put this one away and get our birdies back. Speaking of birdies, we have a lot of birdies showing up around here. I hope. Everyone is getting some birds back because that's a really nice sign at spring, but I actually heard, I think it was some sort of finch singing the other day. Not up on my birds, so I'm not sure, but somebody was definitely singing its little heart out. It was great. Okay, ink our birds and they're just gonna go in between the clouds there. And then that stamp. And I'm gonna put the ink spot away. We don't need that anymore. Put the stamp away, set my block off to the side out of my way. There we go. Yes, I sing to myself. Okay. So we are, oh, you know what I didn't get? <laughs> the card base. That would be helpful. It's kind of hard to add, put stuff on your base if you don't have the base. So we will fold that run our bone folder up and down the edge to get it nice and flat. There we are. So I'm gonna set the here's to you just up here for a second. And we're gonna add these four pieces and these are all on dimensionals. So where do we wanna start? Let's start with the green at the bottom, get our mini dimensionals. Uh, yeah. There. I'm going to put four on this one just to make sure that it's going to stick there. Just because this is thin, it can bend easily. So if I put dimensionals underneath, then it stays popped up properly, it doesn't get squished in the mail. Take the backing off our dimensionals. There. And put this down here. Funny story, when I was making this sample, I was happily putting dimensionals on this piece and then realized I had stuck the dimensionals 
to the green side. Fortunately, they came off and I put them the other way around so that we actually have the green showing on our card. And we're just gonna put that a little down below this image that's here and kind of offset it a bit about there. Okay, I'm gonna do the cloud pieces next. So we'll get both of those. So we've got our yellow and our pink cloud pieces. We'll add dimensionals to those. This slightly wider one, I am going to kind of do a zigzag pattern with my dimensionals. If I put them down the center, it can kind of tip because it's a bit wider. Whereas if I do like this, where I've got the zigzag, then it kind of supports both top and bottom of the piece. And we'll take the backings off those, maybe, there we go. One more, there. And so this one is going to go just above this printed image and offset slightly to the right, there. And then our last little cloud piece. This one's thin enough that I'm just gonna put the dimensionals down the center. There. And once again, peel the backings off. I have to say, I really like the colors in this kit. They go together really nicely. It's quite pretty. Okay, and this is just gonna go up above our other cloud piece here. Kind of lined up with the image below, but it doesn't have to exactly wherever you wanna put it, approximately there. And then we need our trees. So I'm gonna put the full size dimensionals on the base here. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut and so these trees are a little thin. Uh, the dimensional would fit on this bigger tree, but I'm going to just trim the edges of my dimensional and, and take these little edge pieces. And so I can kind of put that along here. And I'm just gonna trim little pieces off the edge. And that way my dimensional I know isn't going to overhang at all and show on the front of my card. Get that there. One more piece on that tree. And let's see. Get a little piece. on the littlest tree there. And I'm gonna take one more bit, maybe, there we go, to go down at the bottom here. Oh, that's gonna stick up a bit, so I'm just gonna trim this off with my scissors. And now that fits down there without showing on the front of my card. Okay, so that's my, my little helpful slash thrifty tip. A, a lot of folks already know this, but you can just cut and use this border from your dimensionals as well as using the dimensionals themselves. And get the backing off all of these bits and pieces. Oh, maybe, there we go. And do just be a little careful. You can't see it because I'm off to the side, but if this sticks to your thumb, you can see it's kind of pulling the trees. So just kind of be careful with your trees. We don't want to pull them off the base there. That one, oh, can't get it. There we go. And one more little piece here. Okay, and this one, oh, sticking to my fingers, there we go. I'm gonna kind of line up with this 
bottom edge of the image here. And I'm sticking the bottom down first, and then I can make sure my trees are nice and straight. There we go. Okay, so that's our background all done. So next we need to get this twine that's gonna go underneath the sentiment. And once again, if we go to our instructions, attach nested 16 inches of linen thread to the white label with glue dots. So get our thread and measure out 16 inches. Please note that doesn't have to be exact, you know, give or take a little bit there and move that off to the side for half a sec. And so I'm gonna put some glue dots. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some dimensionals to the outside of this. This is gonna be up on dimensionals. And I put some dimensionals just at the outside of this to start. And then I can put my glue dots just inside the dimensionals. So now I know kind of where I'm gonna stick my linen thread. So for now, just take the backing off the glue dots, leave the backing on the dimensionals. Oops, there isn't a glue dot there. It is glued to my finger. And since I don't actually want my finger to be part of the card, we're gonna get another glue dot. There. Okay, so take the backing off the glue dots. And so we want this linen thread to be kind of in a circle, it doesn't have to be pretty. The point is to just have that there is to add an embellishment and a little bit of texture. The easy way for me was to just wrap it around my fingers loosely, kind of so-ish. And then we'll just get that stuck down. Again, this doesn't have to be exact, doesn't have to be really pretty. In fact, it's probably better if it's not exact. I'm gonna stick that on there. And so from the front, we're gonna have this. This one I did straight up and down today. I did it at a bit of an angle just for fun. And now we can take the backing off our dimensionals. Actually, I'm gonna put one more dimensional in the middle there. Now that I know where my linen thread is there. And take the backing off those. There, and then the sentiment goes just kind of down in this bottom corner-ish. The other thing, if you did accidentally have dimensional show behind this thin piece, you can cover it with your sentiment. Put that about there, like so. All right, that's the outside of our card done. And because I like to put stuff on the inside, I did some trees on the inside. This is the pretty peacock color again. So I have a little pretty peacock stamp and spot and I'm going to get my stamp set back and get these trees. There. And we'll ink up, oops, I'm gonna open this up first. There we go. Get the ink on the trees. If you are using a little stamp and spot like this, you can let me pick it up so you can see better. You can kind of see, there that's better, that it's forming lines where the edge of the stamp and spot goes, just keep going over it and those are gonna blend together and disappear. There we go. And put our trees down in the bottom corner here. Oops, didn't quite get enough ink on there. That's okay, it still works. Clean my stamp and close my stamp and spot. If something did happen that you didn't like how that was, you could always just cut a piece of cardstock and put it inside. Do a better job of cleaning my stamp. There we go. That's better. And I will put that away. 
And there is our card. So now we just have to do our envelope insert for this one. So get all our glue dots out again. Yeah, oh, except I'm not having much luck with the glue dots right now. <laughs> Can glue dots have a mind of their own? Because I think mine do. There we go. And there, there we go. That's working a little better now. Okay. Add a few more here. Once again, having an argument with the glue dots. It happens from time to time. There. Add a few more in the middle. I want to make sure that this stays in our envelope nicely. There, set those guys off and then pull the backing off all of these dots. I know it feels a bit tedious to add all these dots and take the backing off, but it's worth it or at least I think it is to have the nice liner in our envelope. As I mentioned before though, if you don't wanna have the liner, you can always just, well, you don't have to do it instead of, but you can always just stamp right on this as well as, or instead of the envelope liner, if you want. We'll slide this in all the way to the bottom there. Hang on. There, that's better. Let's stick that down. And I'm gonna fold it along this crease, use my bone folder for that. There, and now I have my card and my coordinating envelope liner. All right, so that is the two cards that are in this month's kit. I'll bring this back out. So there is four of each of these. We're just doing the, the one for today just to show you. And now you can go either make more the same or you can, now that you've seen how the one goes, you can start changing it up if you like. So I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna get out the stencils so we can have a look at those because that was a fun extra gift this month. Just one moment, I'm just gonna put all these other things back in my paper pumpkin box. Very handy to have this box to hold everything. Put all my other things back in there like so. Okay, so the sponge and the stencils that we got this month. Let's open up the stencils. Okay. All right, so we've got kind of a mountain scene. And this is actually kind of a few different scenes in one. So you can see this would be kind of mountains, this would be different shaped mountains, or this would give you the sky behind the mountains, that sort of thing. Uh, this one obviously is different clouds. This one is like a sunburst and we have some stars. So for today, I just grabbed, the stencils are four inches by four inches. So for today, I just grabbed a few different pieces of basic white cardstock that are four inches by four inches, just so I can show you the different stencils. But you don't, I would say you wouldn't normally be cutting the cardstock to match this. You certainly could if you wanted to just make a, a panel that size, but you can set this on any size cardstock and you don't even have to use the whole stencil. You know, you could put this on a piece of cardstock and just use this top portion or something like that. But for today, I thought it would be fun just to, to show you all four. And it did include the sponge. And what I'm gonna do is just take my scissors and snip this guy. Oh, maybe if my scissors will cooperate with me there and I'm gonna cut this into 
border. So we have four stencils. So we'll get four different pieces of sponge to use the ink with our stencils. There's two. And cut this one in half. There. So now we have, we can use different colors. And one thing with the sponges, I'll show you, but when you're done with them, you can just kind of brush the ink off and let it dry and then you can use it again. I kind of keep it to a color family. So if it's got blue on it, I use it with other blues, that sort of thing. Speaking of which, I think I will start with the stars and I'm gonna do them in pretty peacock. So what we do, we get our, stamp and spot our ink pad. You can also, um, I don't have it today, but you can just stick a little bit of adhesive on the stencil and hold it gently on your cardstock so it stays in place. And that way, if you're trying to create a scene, you don't end up with the pieces off center or not where you want them. I'm just gonna use my hand to, to hold it in place for today and get some ink on here. And so I'm just going to pat this ink onto, and please make sure you have scrap paper underneath this. You can see this is going off the edge here, which is perfectly fine. So you can pat it on like that, or you could try smearing across like this. Gives you kind of different look. I'll do a few more where I just tap it like this, and then I'll take the stencil off and you can see the difference. Okay, I think that's enough of those guys. And take the stencil off. And so there we have some stars. So these ones at the top and the bottom is where I kind of tapped it. And in the middle is where I slid it across like this. So this tapping, it gives you kind of a, a speckled look because you get the texture of the sponge. Whereas if you swipe it across, you get a different look to it. And then I'm actually just going to put the stencil on my Stampin' Chamois and clean that off. Um, you can use a damp cloth instead if you wish. And wipe some ink off my hands here. One second while I get this clean. I'm gonna set that aside. I have a little rag on my lap to wipe ink off my fingers. There, I'm gonna set the pretty peacock aside and I'm gonna, what I was talking about earlier with the sponge is you can just wipe it on your cardstock like that and it kind of cleans the excess or on your cardstock, on your scrap paper, sorry. And it kind of cleans the excess ink off. And then if you set it aside, it will dry and then you can use it again. And that's where I was talking about the different color family. So I'll, I'll just keep using that sponge for, for blue ink. Move that one off. Hmm. Well, apparently I'm talented. Looks like I've been fingerprinted. Okay, let's get a different one. Let's try, oh, sunburst. Okay, let's do the sunburst. And I've got some bumblebee. I chose colors just because they coordinate with this um, kit, but you use whatever colors you would like for whatever project you're doing. And I'm just gonna do a portion of this up the top here, just to show you what this looks like. And again, you can use a little bit of adhesive, um, particularly on this one, because these pieces can, can kind of move a bit. Fill that in. And so that shows you how the sunburst would look. And that one, I was just patting it on. Again, if you slide the sponge across, it would look a little bit different, but that would be a really fun background to do for an image. Ooh, speaking of background, going back to the stars, one idea I had that I haven't tried yet though, but I think it would look really pretty, is if we use the Versamark ink to do the stars and then put um, on, on a dark cardstock. So maybe doing it on say Knight of Navy cardstock, something like that. Use the Versamark and then put uh, embossing powder to 
take the stencil off, put the embossing powder on, and then uh, heat set the embossing powder. And if you did that in white or silver, it would, I think, create a really lovely background for that. Clean the yellow off that. I'm doing it off to the side here because it's not really exciting to look at. There we go. Next, we've got some clouds there. And I got, what did I grab? I grabbed my balmy blue ink pad for this guy. And I'm just gonna do these little guys here. And the top, just to give you an idea, across this. Just to give you an idea what this one looks like. So there is our clouds. That's how that one turns out. So the top one was this opening here. So it kind of, you end up coloring the sky and leaving the clouds in white. Whereas these other ones, you're kind of coloring the clouds. So there's that one. Let's smudge that ink off there. And one more I will just quickly show you is our landscape one. And I've got an old olive ink pad for this one. And again on this one, there's a couple different. So this would kind of almost like you're coloring the sky and leaving the mountains. Whereas these bottom two would be like you're, you're coloring the mountains. Just quickly fill those in. Obviously you wouldn't have to do green. That's just the color I grabbed just to show this quickly. And I'm gonna fill in this one here. And you just go back and ink up your sponge as often as you need to, to get it as light or as dark as you want. Lift up the stencil. And so there's our, our mountains. So as you can see, this creates hills, whereas this gives the outline of the hills. So you could do that either way. Okay, and that is our stencils. And these are really fun. I can, I can envision all sorts of backgrounds created with this. I mean, you could combine two of them. So you have some mountains with some clouds in behind or, you know, clouds and stars or whatever. There's a whole variety of combinations you could do and vary the colors and come up with all sorts of different scenes there. So those are going to be really fun. I look forward to playing with those more. I hope you enjoyed creating with me this morning. Uh, I will be back next Saturday. Uh, it is Easter weekend, but I'm still going to be here next Saturday. And I think I'm going to use the Oval Occasion stamp set from the mini catalog. I haven't quite decided yet, but I will post do a post this week that shows you a picture of what we'll make and lists the supplies you'll need to craft along with me. So thanks for joining. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I will see you all next Saturday. <laughs>